Well, hi and welcome. Uh, you know, when someone's looking at working with a business coach, one of the things is how does my business grow? And that's the other video. This video is about how do you grow? Because, you know, you can't, I guess the simplest thing is the more you grow, the more the business can grow. The better you get at being a business owner, the better you get at running a business, obviously, the more the business grows. I know for me as a CEO of an organization, the more I grow my people, the more they grow the business. But also, if I want them to grow, I've got to keep learning and growing. And it's the old, you can't out earn your learning type thing. If you want to run a multi-million dollar business, you got to learn to run a multi-billion, multi-million dollar business. If you want to run a hundred million or a billion, you got to learn how to do that stuff first. And so, uh, as you set new goals for yourself and you set new goals for the business, you've got to grow into your goals, I guess is probably the simplest way to put it. Uh, I'm Brad Sugars. I'm the chairman and founder here at Action Coach. Uh, we are the biggest business coaching company in the world, and uh, we love helping people like you grow their business, so much so that uh, we give away a lot of free eBooks and a whole bunch of information about how to grow your business on our YouTube channel. And uh, wherever you're at, uh, we look forward to helping you grow your business. Today, I want to share with you, though, how does coaching help you grow so that the business grows? So uh, to grow your business, we have uh, the six steps formula from mastery right through to freedom. To grow you, we work through a, se a similar system, and it's the ladder of the, uh, of the entrepreneur, I guess. The entrepreneurial ladder starts as a student okay so even as a student we're starting on our entrepreneurial journey because why well a student is like an apprentice employee okay so you're learning how to have a job i guess you're learning enough information so that you can get a job and add value to society and a student i i always say that you know the student is level minus one because it costs money to be a student whether it costs you know, your parents' money or, or you as a parent for your kids or, or society, the government, you know, whichever way it costs money to be a student. Well, when you step into level zero, which is that of an employee, and now you're starting to pay taxes, of course, you're paying back the cost of getting you to where uh, we got you to, and hopefully you'll make enough money eventually to not just pay back what it costs society to get you there or your parents. <laughs> uh, as a father of five, by the way, I know that like there's no way in the world this uh, is ever going to work out. But I love my kids, so I put them in the best schools. Yes, that's that's a whole other story, isn't it? But when you become an employee, you really what you are is an apprentice business owner. And a lot of people never get past that apprenticeship. They never go into business for themselves. And uh, Obviously, you're watching this video it means you're in business for yourself or you're contemplating being in business for yourself. And how do you need to grow? Well, as an employee, and I guess I was, I guess I was lucky that as a young man, I was not good at keeping jobs. I got asked to move on on a fairly regular basis. So I got to try a bunch of different things in sales, in marketing, in finance, in operations. And all of that stuff, especially as a teenager going through high school and as a young man in college, I got to try a lot of different things, everything from sales to working as a gardener, you name it, I got to do it type thing. And so it really brought a lot of different experiences. And I think that that helped prepare me to be a business owner because as an employee, I got paid to learn sales. I didn't have to learn it in my own business. As an employee, I got paid to learn finance. I didn't have to learn it when I was running my own business type thing. And I think it's a, a great thing to understand that your job is part of your entrepreneurial journey. And you possibly want to have multiple different jobs before you go into business for yourself. Now, the flip side of that, uh, I was chatting with a gentleman a few months back and he's in engineering. And he said, well, Brad, what about me then? You know, before I opened my own business, I'd done 24 years in engineering. And I said, well, you know, I hate to say it, but you did one year 24 times. Uh, you didn't go and learn sales and you didn't learn marketing and you didn't learn finance and all the other aspects of it are the things that you need to know because the next step up the ladder is to go from student to employee to self-employed. And most of us, when we step into the realm of self-employed, it's like, who's, how many people in your company? One, me, nobody else, you know, it's just me. I get to uh, do the mail. I also get to do the social media. I also get to do the, the leasing and the purchasing and the manufacturing and you name it. I get to do all of that stuff. And 
uh, I remember when I first started there, and, I, and maybe you do too, but uh, starting out at that self-employed definitely felt like the seesaw, you know, find the work, do the work, find the work, do the work. You know, you got to make a sale and then you got to go and deliver and then you got to make another sale and then you got to go deliver sort of thing. And it was, uh, but the thing about it is there's so much to learn at self-employed and, uh, You've got to learn all these things. And if you didn't learn them as an employee, you got to learn them in your level. And that's where a lot of people, when they come to us at Action Coach, are at that self-employed level. They may have a couple of team members, but they're still uh, more self-employed. And if I look back at why a lot of businesses fail, they fail because the owner never shifted from employee to self-employed. They never got to the discipline to do it themselves. They're always waiting for someone else to tell them what to do. And, and they're like, well, I don't know what to do. Well, you own the place. You better go learn what to do. If, you, if you're the owner, the buck stops with you. And if it fails, it's because you didn't go learn the things you needed to do. And uh, it's a big reason why we here at Action Coach uh, love helping business people. We love helping you learn how to do this stuff because... Uh, uh, just because you're great at the job of the business, I'll give you an example. A friend of my wife's, uh, my wife loves uh, giving my advice away for free to her friends. And uh, she's in the hairdressing business. And my wife said, yeah, talk to Brad. He'll help you out. And so she came to me with the problem. And she said, you know what, Brad, it's just not fair. I said, well, what do you mean it's not fair? She said, well, you know, I, I own my own business. And some weeks my employees make more money than I do. So, okay, explain to me what you do every day. She said, well, you know, I cut hair all day. And, and I said, well, whoa, 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 hang on. So you're doing employees work and you want owner's money. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, an employee is cutting the hair. You're an employee of your own business all day, every day. Who's doing the manager's work and the owner's work? She said, well, you know, I, I, I guess I am. And I said, well, if you spend all day every day doing the job, and, and I had to be a little blunt with her, and I said, you know what? Saving a wage is costing you a fortune. Not paying someone to cut those people's hair means there's no one running different marketing campaigns to bring in more customers. There's no one recruiting more people into the business. You know, there's, there's so many things we can look at. But she had to grow from that daily grind of self-employed, of doing employee work into the next layer, which is the manager, where you get off the tools. And that's one of the first goals we work with a lot of business owners on is how do you get off the tools? In fact, i give you an example. Uh, a client of ours in Southern California, it was a, uh, he put it up on, uh, on Instagram. This is why I saw it. Uh, it was his final day ever wearing the boots. He was a tradesman, obviously, and uh, in his business, the day he got out of his steel-capped boots was for him a historic moment, to the point where he had them bronzed and put in a display case with the date written on it that I no longer have to work in the business, I can now work on the business. He moved from self-employed, meaning doing the work every day to now being manager level in the business. See, uh, we use a term called leverage here at Action Coach and leverage, uh, its mathematical formula is divide to multiply. If you break something up into the small parts and you multiply and you fix each part, it multiplies the end result. Kind of like, um, you know, H.J. Hines was the first one to ever build a, a production line. Henry Ford made it uh, a lot more uh, famous, of course, of breaking down the process of building a car and therefore, you know, it, it, it increased the capacity massively sort of thing. Um, ultimately, leverage my definition is do the work once, get paid forever. So, you know, when I wrote this book, uh, I did the work one time and I get royalty forever type thing. It's uh, build a business once that runs without you and get paid forever type thing. Invest in and you know what I'm saying, right? Well, I had to teach my wife's friend the difference between employees work, which is do the work once, get paid once. Managers work, do the work once, get paid long term. And owners work, do the work once and get paid for ever. Okay, and teaching her the distinction between the three types of work 
she started to realize that by cutting hair every day, she wasn't saving a wage. She was costing herself money because no one's over there on the phone calling past customers to get them back. No one's doing marketing campaigns to bring in new customers. All of these things that can be done that are more manager work that bring in money long term, that's the sort of thing we need to progress through. And so as a self-employed, there's a lot to learn. Now, when you get up to the manager level, when you start employing others, there's even more to learn. Management, leadership, uh, recruiting, induction, training, systemization, planning, cash flow planning, all of the things that we need to learn at that phase. And again, if you've learned it working for someone else before, even better. But when it gets to your own business, there's an interesting thing that happens. I was with a group just yesterday. And we were discussing the fact of the emotional difference between when you ran someone else's business, like if you had a job and you were running someone else's company versus when it's your own business. And this particular uh, uh, lady was telling me the story of how she was a marketing manager for a very, very large uh, organization. And her annual budget was around about half a million dollars every year in marketing and advertising expenditure. If there was a marketing campaign that was 50 grand, she'd just cut the check and sign it and off it goes because it wasn't her money. Now, in her own business, we were talking about a marketing campaign that was worth $500. And she's like, but what if, how, well, like the emotional difference when it's your money is very different. And so that's where helping learn to move through that phase is a big part of your growth. You know, I, in all the years that we've been doing this, 30 years at Action Coach, I've had the privilege of interviewing literally hundreds and hundreds of Epic Entrepreneurs. You can check out our podcast, Epic Entrepreneurs, as well. And it's about interviewing our customers who've made great growth in their business. They've done amazing things with their business and built a lot of freedom for themselves, both money freedom and time freedom, of course. Um, and in essence, the one question that always stands out for me when I ask them is, how did you have to grow? What, what had to change for you personally in order for the business to get the results that you got? And without fail, the answer always comes back to this answer in some way, shape or form. I had to let go. I had to allow my team to do the job. I had to just let go of wanting to be a control freak and have you know, my finger in every single pie. I had to allow my people to perform. And that's, I guess, the big difference between when we are self-employed and at self-employed level, it's all about you doing the work and others supporting you and then moving to the manager level where it's about them doing the work and you supporting them you building them. Again, you build your people, they build the business type thing. And so that emotional goal. And then when we move to the manager level, we're moving from where we're taking drawings from the company to taking a wage and taking profitability from the business and really treating it as an asset where you, you definitely draw a wage for yourself, but you're also taking profitability from the organization once a quarter or more often or less often, depending upon the size of the business. And then ultimately from that manager level, you'll build your people, you'll build your systems, you'll build the organization to a point where you can step up to owner. And if you think of it this way, if I was your coach uh, at, at Action Coach, I would coach you an hour a week. We'd do planning every 90 days. And I'd come back and coach you an hour each week or every two weeks, depending upon the, the program you're on. Well, ultimately, I want to teach you how to do that. I want to teach you how you can coach your business in that way, where you can put on a manager or a CEO and they run the business and you coach them in an hour a week. You plan with them every 90 days and then spend an hour a week coaching them. Ultimately, that's where I'd love to help you get your business to. And maybe then you'll want to come and join us and be a coach with Action Coach and help us coach many more companies around the world. You know, uh, I love the movement of our business. We believe in world abundance through business re-education. We believe we can create amazing results if business people help business people. If you bring us, uh, like if, if you're a B2B and you bring us all of your customers, all of the other businesses, we all grow together. And that's a phenomenal thing. See, the bigger your customers grow, the more they need to buy from you. But that's a big part of the movement of all of us growing together uh, here at Action Coach.
So finally, once we've got you to that point of owner, you've got your time freedom back. And then you've got profits coming in. And those profits eventually, and we teach you the next two phases, is where you become an investor and you start investing those profits. So instead of making profits, you're doing a return on investment. And then eventually, if you become a good investor, you step up to the level of entrepreneur, where now it's not about investing your money, it's about helping other people invest their money with you, where you create investment opportunities out there into the marketplace. And that level of growth of you is a big part of it. So if you go back to our definition of a business, business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Once you've got it running without you, what does that mean? Well. One of the first uh, two goals we like to set with you when you start with us, goal number one is by what date do you want to be off the tools? If, you're, if you run an accounting business, by what date do you want to no longer be doing accounting for the customers? By what date do you want to be running the business? If you're an engineering firm, by what date do you want to stop doing the engineering and start running the business type thing? You know? And then the second date we like to set with you is by what date do you want to finish the business? What does that mean? We'll go back to the definition. When will it run without you? You don't have to not be there, but it needs to be able to run without you. What if one day something happened? What if one day you just woke up and said, you know what, I don't want to do any of this anymore. Okay, then great. Let's build it so that it can work and it can run without you. See, it, it makes money, not you make money. The business grows with or without you phenomenal result in the end. Well, by setting the date by which you're going to finish your business, you're going to create an asset. Okay, You're going to turn that into uh, the, the whole idea of it is to build something that is worth something. When I was a young man, one of my mentors said to me, the only reason to start a business is to sell it. And I thought, why would I ever want to sell it? I love my business. I don't ever want to sell my business. It took me a while to learn that uh, the idea of a business is to build something you can sell, to build something that you can capitalize so that instead of just pay, being paid by the cash flow, you get paid by the capital growth. Most people never sell their business. They never build something that's saleable and they end up having to shut it down or pass it on to family. Ultimately, if we can build an asset, then we build real wealth by building a business, not just build cash flow by building a business. That's the ultimate aim of what we're trying to do here. So how will that growth happen? Well, there's four real areas that you'll uh, get that from. Number one, you'll learn from your coaches. Okay, uh, whichever coach you're working with at that point in time, and depending upon what you're looking at, uh, different coaches from the action coach firm that you work with locally or work with you. Sometimes you'll stay with the same coach for several years. Other times you'll change coaches every six or 12 months, depending upon what you need and what the business needs. Uh, you'll also learn from me as your coach through videos, through books, through webinars, all those things we do worldwide, some uh, virtual events that, that we do, some growth and planning things. <coughs> uh, you'll also learn from other coaches. Uh, we bring in other coaches at different times to teach you things and uh, great authors, great business people uh, through podcasts, through uh, videos, through membership days, local speakers at your membership days and your planning days. You'll also then learn from the community. See, even at some of those local days, not only will you be with your mastermind group, but on some of those days, they'll also have some of the clients who've been around five, six, seven years stand up and tell you about how they did what they did. And you'll learn from someone who's three or four years ahead of you, if that makes sense. They've already been doing this coaching thing and uh, you'll get to learn with and from them. Uh, you'll also learn from a lot of the education programs, uh, whether they're one of our 12 week training programs, that's a formulated uh, event, whether it is uh, the podcasts, the books, um, any of those programs that are designed, our 30x programs, 30x business, 30x life, 30x wealth, uh, each of those are a 30 day training program for you to follow through. and in many of our areas we'll learn that in 30 days and then we'll go back and apply it over 30 weeks type thing and and learn the application of, of all of those uh, you'll also get to attend bizx our annual program bizx is uh, where we bring in a lot of outside speakers and we come together nationally and internationally uh, to 
uh, meet with the rest of the community uh, so we not only learn from the speakers but from the community and sometimes the best lessons happen at lunch when we're just chatting with someone we've never met and we're talking about business and they ask us a question and hey presto we get a great answer uh, we built a lot of great relationships at BizX. You'll get to meet a lot of friends from around the world, around the country, and uh, really build up a network of people that will be there to help and assist you in, in those times. Uh, ultimately, though, uh, you're going to grow. You, you will grow, your people will grow, and that's what grows your business. The more education, the more knowledge, and following the system of growth, obviously, is a big part of it. So as the business grows up the six steps and you grow up the ladder of entrepreneurship, and we combine that with the care philosophy, the community, accountability, results, and education, add those three things together and that puzzle comes together in a methodology that allows you to grow and build a great business and build a great future. You know, ultimately, the idea is that business, being in business should give you more life. Being a business owner should be about getting you to a place where the business works so you don't have to, where it makes money whether you get out of bed or go play golf or whether you go on a vacation with your family or go and do some charity work. Whatever it is you're doing, if the business keeps making money and building and growing without you, then we know we've succeeded at what we're aiming to achieve. Now, to get there, it takes work. It's uh, Whilst when I outline the formulas, it does seem simple, there's still a lot of work to be done. And that growth and learning that, that uh, gets done over a career, uh, I, I jokingly tell people, well, it's not really a joke, I guess. When I meet new people, a lot of times they ask me, well, Brad, what do you do? And I say, well, I teach business people and I teach about the subject of money. And they go, you teach about money? Yeah, I teach people about wealth and about how they can invest and become entrepreneurs and, and do all those sorts of things. I'm like, wow, so you can teach me to get rich? And they always ruin it. They ruin it by saying, you can teach me how to get rich quick. You know, you, I, I can teach you how, if, if 10 years is your definition of quick, then yes, I can teach you how to get rich quick. It's 10 years, though. And uh, oftentimes they say, oh, 10 years, that seems like forever. And so, well, tell me, what plan do you have to do it faster? And they look at me, well, I don't have a plan to do it faster. Great. Then my, then my speed is the fastest speed you know, so let's follow the plan and let's do that. Now, in business, depending upon where you're at, it might be only three years to get your business to a point where it runs without you and, and builds great wealth. It might be 10 years. You might have just started out type thing, or it might be five or seven, somewhere in the middle. But the big thing is for you to now make sure you get back with the coach who uh, sent you this video or fill in the form below and uh, the questionnaire and, and meet with the coach or just hit that uh, book a call button and uh, get to know us. Get to know what we do and let us uh, meet with you and help coach you through growing an amazing business. Anyway, look forward to helping you. Look forward to meeting you at one of our events at some stage and look forward to seeing your business grow with us here at Action Coach.